Good morning, folks. You are watching the departure of the sunspots towards the limb. We've got space weather, earthquake, top science news, and a good feeling at the end. Starting at spaceweathernews.com, finding the last day on our star exceedingly quiet by comparison to the eruptive behavior of days before. There is no solar flaring of note. Solar wind has begun to calm back down as well, coming off the plateau for a very short-lived and relatively moderate strength impact that has also waned back to minor disruptions in the magnetic field. We've got plasma filaments dancing. Sunspots are about to leave this half of the sun. Don't forget we've got CMEs due at Earth over the next 24 hours and a likely re-sparking of the geomagnetic storm conditions, not expecting anything catastrophic. But during the actual run of the solar storm we did have, we got an uptick in exactly what we expect. Transformer fires, electrical explosions, and the glitches which seem to focus only on the global scale digital systems like airlines and GPS, every time. Moving next to earthquakes, big one struck Papua New Guinea, or as Billy calls it, Conductor Island. Looking for the pre-signal rundown, there were only two blood echoes and they were set west of the eventual shock. However, it was not only surrounded by low pressure cells, but they were the global electric circuit release points for the nearby geomagnetic inductions into the south magnetic polar zone. Furthermore, the region that shook fell on a delta class earth spot, Outgoing long-wave radiation with a close-in steep gradient. We'll update the stats later at QuakeWatch.net where you can learn about all of these factors and predict earthquakes yourself. Let's go to the sea and their latest on stormy weather affecting the oceans. Interesting technology tracking the differences in microwave emission from frothy water and from flattened waves. And how they give information about what is going on underneath the enormous cloud blanket of tropical storms. Speaking of storms... Interesting story about a tornado scientist who wants to fly drones into supercells to figure out why some storms drop twisters and others don't. They'll actually be looking in the wrong place to answer that question. That is dictated at the low pressure node itself. Interesting work out of Keck. They trained in on that allegedly young star system with three baby planets. They are now coming back and debunking the concept, saying that it's a tight disk. That's the only real explanation for the images being returned. Something we've discussed since 2011 is coming to fruition. They are going to use the global power grid as an antenna to measure incoming space weather. By installing certain devices, they should be able to learn more about the disruptive action of solar storms and even maybe where they might be prone to spreading given a genesis location. And speaking again of space weather, this more than 200-page behemoth paper has one point of incredible interest. Folks, I don't even know where to get some of this data, like the CME numbers by year, but look at how there is so much more than sunspot number to deal with. Also, in terms of CME production, grand solar maximum was 1989 to 2007, indicating that the sun's output actually did not begin to drop out until this very last cycle, 24. Huge implications for grand solar minimum forecasts and a big win for solar particle forcing of the terrestrial climate. I promised a good note to end today, justice. This is the third and largest award handed down in court recently, and to show you how delusional these groups are, look at their statement about the matter. Denial. Refusal to acknowledge facts, basically evil, murdering, money-hungry former class nerds. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.